Hello ladies and gentlemen, Tevron here, and welcome to Let's Play The Beginner's Guide. I was told by several people that I should give this game a try. Uh, turns out it's by one of the devs of the Stanley Parable. I believe his name is David or Davy Weirden or Redden, uh, something like that. I don't really know how it's pronounced. And I really enjoyed the Stanley Parable. However, some of the people who also told me to try this game told me that it may hit me in some places that I... They wouldn't exactly tell me what it was about, but they told me that it could cause some uh, emotions to come to the surface. And as such, I'm not doing this playthrough completely sober. I'm not d drunk by any means, but I have had uh, a little bit of uh, liquid courage, one might say, and I have a drink here with me, so I plan to stay about this level throughout the entire game if necessary. I don't think this game's very long. The Steam description said it was about an hour and 30 minutes. It may take me a bit longer seeing as how I tend to uh, uh, go expositionary on things, but we'll see. And I hope this is something that we can enjoy together. That being said, let's see what this is all about. Standard uh, controls. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing the Beginner's Guide. You're welcome. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote I'll the Stanley Davey Parable. Reedon. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. All right. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. Oh, cool. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, oh, yeah. and instead this right level there. becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. Hmm. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. 
This first one was made in November 2008. Okay. That introduction makes me really wonder if that the whole narrative that, that he was putting out there about his friend, um, Coda, making... I'm wondering if it's actually based in reality. Is I guess what I'm trying to get across, or if it's entirely a fictional narrative for the for the sake of this game. I mean, I think it would be really significant as to what we gather from this to know. Don't know if we'll be told or not. Oh, you got a gun. So we've got to evacuate. This game is called Escape from Whisper. And it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Oh. Can we shoot these rocks? Uh, we can, but it doesn't do anything. Let's go this way then. Hello, Whisper Machine. We're trying to get away from you, I think. Oh, we can jump. Cool. Can't go through there. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid development. For uh -huh. instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. Oh. But ultimately, we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are rather than for what they're not. Okay. Persistent bullet holes there. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Oh. <laughs> it's pretty cool, I guess. Kind of neat. What's this? Nothing? Kind of a coconut or a bowling ball pattern there. Well, this, yeah, that door opens the lots along the floor. Apparently this space station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Okay, wait, I wanna... I wanna look at the labyrinth. Or, if you'd really like to solve the labyrinth, you're welcome to do that, too. Thanks. I would like to solve the labyrinth. Or at least see the labyrinth. Is this where we came in? I think that's where we came in from. Alright, so I was on kind of the right track, I think. It was this way. It was not that one. This one. And around. And out. See, we solved it. Yay. Sort of. I'm okay, gonna, this is the backwards. part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Oh, I thought we were trying to evacuate. Hey, okay. You there in the engine room. Hello? You could save us all. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. Okay. If you your body could stop the beam. Oh. So much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Um. Could you give yourself? I mean, I know it's just a game. That's a really significant question, though. Could, could any, could you give your life for someone else? Uh, I mean, I'd like to think I could. Well, seeing as it's just a game, and we're dead. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. Okay. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Um. Oh, we're back in here? All right, so... Oh, we're floating. Well, that's cool. Can see the, the beam causes you to start floating. Box. 
And this is an important moment for him. There's the lever. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it, like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, mm. a peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Okay, Coda sounds like an interesting person. Um, nice music, I can't move. The past was, I can turn around. The past was behind her. Oh, I yep. can move. In this game, you can only walk backwards. Oh, I mean, that's interesting. Path was behind her. So we just go straight back. No doors off to the side. Oh. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. I think the. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Uh huh. I... Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre existing trope. I think the room changed because I think that back wall was way further back here. I know that it didn't say that the future could not be seen on it. And now, oh, now that way's open and we got words here. Why does the future keep changing? What's back here with this? Did anything change back in this room? Nope, just the past was behind her. So now we can go that way. Or no, I went the wrong way. This is a little bit disorienting. Okay, we want to go this way. <laughs> Walking backwards. <laughs> when she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. Okay. But if the future is always behind her, how will she find the strength? These words are appearing as I walk by them. On the strength to confront it. It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Okay. Didn't need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works, because it gets huh. out quick. Okay, next one. We're on a path in the darkness. We can't go that way. Can't go off the path. This is very interesting. You are now entering. What are we entering? Anything? Is this just... Oh! And that's it! Okay, huh. the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Huh. I like that. Uh... I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? I don't know. Like, uh, uh, where it started you looking upwards at that door, gave you a, can't fall off, gave you a real sense of height. I know it's tempting, Scale. but there's actually nothing over here. Sorry. Oh, that's cool. I like that. All right, so I uh, guess we have to go up the stairs then. We can still jump. Seem to be able to jump in all of these games. These little, I guess you, micro games. Would you call them? I, I don't know. Huh. Up the stairs. Oh, feels like we're slowing down. Oh, we're definitely slowing down. Oh, we're getting... Oh. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? 
Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Oh, I heard the door click open. I'd assume that he opened the door to let you know that it's up there and that you'll eventually be able to make it. I'm going to go hit, hit enter there, though. Hello. Good. If I can get past the door frame. So, oh, what? You walk around talking people down from pursuing their hopes and dreams. This game is nothing but giant blocks of text explaining what's happening. A normal game where you have to scream a into a mic every 15 seconds. And nice and filled with little ideas for games. Huh. A key in one game unlocks the door in a completely separate game. You are the queen, dusting your jewelry while your kingdom Koda is destroyed. Koda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can wow. be a very slow climb to get there. It's very... neat. Sounds like he let you in. To his life where he didn't let other people ready set fish. I'm guessing this is not going to be a game about fishing. Oh. Hello. Kind of an industrial parking garage feel here. Kind of reminds me of uh, Goldeneye. Don't know why, I just have that feeling. It's, it's a drop there. Well, this that we isn't can't get back up. No. It's an actual puzzle. Oh. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Is the door the puzzle? Kind of blackness with kind of a fog in here. Open the door. So we get the puzzles to get through that door. Sure. Wonder if we can close this door and slip inside. Yep. Oh, there's a handle. Don't forget nice. that solution because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. Oh. We're gonna see it a lot. There's three dots again. That's the second time we've seen those, I think must have some sort of significance that we just don't know yet. Another drop off there. This time without a door puzzle. We're in a room. It's nice lights. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down oh. a corridor, you solve okay. the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Hmm. All right. Now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Okay. Guess I'll press enter. Whoa. That's a lot of... How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. Wow. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. Right. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Hmm. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. Maybe. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Just to experience, I suppose. Oh, back here again, are we? Walk down the... Oh, you are now exiting. Uh -huh. I got so, it. So, this, I gotcha. combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. Mm -hmm. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. We kind of got an inkling of that back in the room with the game ideas. Where he said, uh, where the game idea was a key in one game unlocks a door in a completely different game. 
place is really pretty. I mean, I know it's just a building on a white background and it's white everything, but I like it. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Okay. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, right. which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Streetwise Fool. To make all here. of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Oh, okay. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. I gotcha. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Hmm. So, door over here. Was this the door we saw on the other side of the building? Won't open. All right, down the. Oh wow. This is different. Blocks floating in space. Oh, this is very different than the exterior. So we jump between them. I really like this. Wow. It just keeps going and going. Oh, and I missed the block. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. No, no. Well. Ooh, I give you a real sense of uh, speed there, falling. I think there's no damage, I suppose. That's awesome just to look at. All right. Down the stairs. Oh, got kind of an invisible wall there. Not really invisible. I can see it. It's kind of smoky. Or just slightly more opaque than the rest. Can we not get in there at all to that light? Guess not. All right, further on then. Some neat lighting effect there. Ooh, this looks like a, um, kind of like a stable or a cattle yard. Oh, and we're locked in. Maybe a prison for cows? I don't know. Can we get over here? No. Oh. So, yeah, we are. It's like we're cattle and we're being herded. Guess we go here. Oh. Oh, let me off. Let me off. Can't get off. Me... Oh, you want me to go into the cell, do you? Alright, I'll play along. Oh. This prison. Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. Hmm. If you don't mind, I think we're going to skip that. Well, that's definitely then, if this is a true story, which I'm not convinced it is, it's where you got the inspiration for that. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. One part you know, of the Stanley whether parable. Whether to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. Hmm. Yeah, but like I was saying, there was one part of the Stanley Parable where you had to uh, 
wait in a room without doing anything for so long. I can't remember how long it was, but it was a long time. It's uh, at least an hour. It might have been several hours, and then if you did something, it would happen. Another spiral staircase with a smoky cylinder in the middle. Huh. Somewhere way up there is the Streetwise Fool Cafe we entered through. Oh, three dots again. Wonder if we'll get an explanation about the three dots and what they mean. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. Okay. Well, that makes it simple then. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. All right. Uh, personally, can we go back through this? Oh, it just closes that door. Personally, it feels to me like it's sort of a metaphor for moving on with your life, like. You can never really move on to something new until you close the door and leave behind the old thing, I guess. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what it feels like it's saying to me. That you have to truly close the door on what your past or one chapter of your life before you can move on to something new in the future. Oh, box-headed people. Am I trapped? We got a furnace or a fireplace there. Hello. Speak. You there. Here, Coda begins using oh. a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Okay. I like how the head, the blockhead twisted, and w when it said something, it says speak, and then it twisted back, and now it says listen. You there, did you come from up above? What was up there? Um, yes, there was an enormous prison I spent hours in. There it is again, speak. That's the world above. You've been, we've, you've been there. Now this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? I'm going to be coy here and see what happens. Say, no, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. You don't? But how did you get here? The puzzle is the only way. There are other ways in and out. You just don't know. There are, but please, you must tell me. You must tell us. You don't understand. We have to get out of here. It is the most important thing. We have to get out of this prison. Can you hear me? Can you tell me how to get it? Kind of missed what it said there at the end. I guess it said to get out. Uh, bye, blockheads. Oh, more blockheads. Are these the same blockheads? I guess we can't go back to find out, can we? Seems like the same room. There's a wardrobe here. Hello. Hello. How did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? No, I've been right here this entire time. I'm just going to keep on with this charade. I suggest you go and see the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved, but you can sit in the black space in the middle. Um... What happens if I solve it? Not sure, but if I have any suspicion, what you find won't be worth what it takes to get there. You'll have another chance to see. I think it said sometime soon. That went by really fast. Alright. Uh, bye, other blockheads. Or same blockheads. Whichever the case may be. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. 
Okay. Very bright light there. Oh. There's the lamp post from the start screen. Now I can't go back it's in. It's a lamp post. Yeah. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamp post. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. Okay. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Lamp post reminds me of the lamp post in the Western Wastes in the Chronicles of Narnia. That's what it evokes in my mind. This game is connected to the internet. As you walk around, you can leave notes. All notes you see are left by other players. So, is this the inspiration for the message system in Dark Souls? I don't really think this game's connected to the internet, I'll be perfectly frank. Nice room, not... Well, maybe it is connected to the internet, that sounds like a very internetish thing to say. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. Aha. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. Mm. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was <laughs> doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. Sounds and like I a good person. Eventually. Oh, we all... Feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. But they're here. I Either feel way, so compelled. To me, they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. Maybe? I know, um... But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better <laughs> and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Coda's games so much. is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. I, mean, I don't know if for sure this is saying that he's reaching out and that he's suffering from some sort of depression or anxiety or something, but I will say that as a person who has struggled and continues to struggle with those things, among other issues, uh, I can very much relate to that feeling, and I know a lot of the things that this that these bubbles are saying do emit that kind of a vibe to me. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sure everybody has their own interpretation. Your, your past and what you've experienced in your life is going to color what you bring out of my, any experience. <laughs> what the shit is this cavern? That's funny. 
boring. It's kind of neat knowing that uh, Coda put all these in himself. I can assure you guaranteed that there is an acorn somewhere here in this place and the sailors are looking for it. it must be a reference I just don't get. Hey guys, just looking for someone to talk with. See, yeah, that's that's kind of what I was talking about there. There were a couple more up there that's, you know, expressed similar th things. I refuse to believe. It's kind of opposite of the X-Files thing, isn't it? <laughs> but ass but. That's a that's an internet note for sure. I need to go to the freaking bathroom. Recognize me, please. Notice me, senpai. There's nothing here. Go back. Don't listen to that guy. Okay, I'll go forward. What's the notes here? A free t-shirt. Need other side. Door, why you so? Is it memes? Door, how open? Open sesame. Makes game, includes door. Cannot open door. Thanks. All right. Maybe it's not meant to be open. Someday I will meet the person who made this. Maybe. Assume it, you know, considering it's yourself, I hope you've met them already. Help people because of the internal good feeling I get. New room. It's an awesome piece of art there. Love abstract stuff like that. Especially love like Jackson Pollock drip paintings. Would like very much to be desired, wouldn't we all? I think it's a very human feeling. Scared of writing something, don't want to feel judged. I know that feeling. It's not very crowded here. I don't know, it seems a little crowded. You can go in here, I think. Welcome, congratulations. I don't really know where to go with this. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't bother game where you leave notes and suddenly everyone's a poet. This is where I get off. I failed to write anything here. I don't know. I think you succeeded. <laughs> I am compelled. I am compelled also. Note. Stop. Turn back. Proceeding further will only result in misery. Take my hand. Let's jump together. Okay. Oh, I guess we can't. I offer cabbage shapes our nation <laughs> okay what is that painting I don't know but I like it I don't have to understand it to know that it evokes good feelings in me it does not matter if you ever get over there that's a deep thought hey don't talk about me that way alright I won't then very good game that remains to be seen although it is very compelling as one of the notes back there said I think um this is not going anywhere that's a very uh, haphazard sentence hard to parse next time I will do better oh it's a good good goal I need someone to talk to I feel that way myself sometimes this is a note it's a large part of the reason that I make these videos and put them up just to get my thoughts out there and have a way to cope with things that I feel within my life don't listen to the other notes okay just kind of a weapon against feelings that I don't want I'm not safe you should be safe get to a place where you feel safe there's one buried in the floor today I learned you cannot fall yeah I learned that over there ethical all right here's one all by its lonesome out here yeah, I really like that painting stop faking it I'll try painting what does it mean it doesn't matter what it means as long as it makes you feel something well done all of you thanks I saw a person walking down there now it won't come back I don't see anybody walking. Devil Tower Star. Okay. 
Who are all of you? Whoever made this has issues. I think it's neat that uh, the developer put that there, seeing as how they made this game. Kind of an internal monologue, I guess, or an expression. Art. Hey guys, how's it going? Just hanging. I think it's about how things look messy from up close and perfect from far away. Maybe. Don't know that it matters what it's about. From up here, it just looks like dots. Well, that's what it looks like from far away as well, but I still like it. Hey, I help. I am trying to speak. Well, you're succeeding. We will all the so we will all die someday. Yeah. Cabbage shapes our nation. That's a repeat. Spoilers. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have to mean anything. Stop pretending you are other people. <laughs> it's very uh, um, introspective there. It's, it's about how this game is pretentious and you all suck. Okay. Devil Tower Star. That's another repeat. He was himself the most horrible creature he could imagine. That's sad. I'm going to judge. I've felt very similarly in the past. Maybe I'll feel real someday. Wow. Whew. This game's making me uh, feel some things, guys. Well, here I... Well, I'm here now. Yeah, we're all here now. There must be a reason for it, though. His terrible secret... He kept it well. I beat the game. More room? At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll repeat. tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. Maybe. I mean, that's very similar to what I said that I thought it meant. To me, though, it's more of a, a larger meaning branching out. There's those three dots again. Uh, branching out into just life in general and not just focused on himself. I wish there were notes in the real world. Become one with the spiraling nonsense. downward keep digging in each of his games after exploring a theme that you know he might find difficult Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution he understands exactly how it works and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on okay I mean I don't know that you're wrong <laughs> literally an hour what do I do Help! Help! This doesn't make sense. The second door won't open. Huh. I mean, we know we know that uh, ostensibly Coda put all these notes in himself. Because there's this, this is not that difficult a puzzle. Doors, a space between spaces. Before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here to step back and connect the pieces together, to grasp at that elusive bigger picture. I kinda like this black fog effect. One, only one message out here. Is that typewriters? How do you leave notes? <laughs> I think you figured it out. Is this supposed to represent everybody that's ostensibly leaving notes throughout this game? Lamp post. Are you there? Please say something. It can be anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me. Please. Why are you having so much difficulty talking? Speak, 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 speak. Ad infinitum.